Now that we've finished our application and we've completely created it for a universal device such as the iPhone and the iPad, we're now ready to add in some of the final touches and one of them is actually being the application icon. So we need to create an app icon, we need to create it not only for the app store but to be displayed and people can see what the application looks like but also for the app itself for the home icon that gets displayed on our device. Now the application icon, believe it or not, comes in many, many different sizes and we need to make sure that we again take care of all of these sizes. So over on the internet here, I'm going to quickly load up our developer.apple.com and we go to our iOS human interface guidelines or our app icon section, it gives us a brief kind of idea of how we need to create our applications. You've got a few examples here of what we have again on our device anyway. So if you scroll down to the kind of a mid-size down, halfway down the screen, we want to take a look at um, some of the app icon sizes that we need. Now the app store size is the largest size that we need to create. So if we create the largest version of the app icon that we're ever going to need for our app, then downscaling it, for example, the iPhone, the iPad Pro, iPad and iPad Mini, stuff like that, is going to be a lot easier. So you can see that the app store size is 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. So what we're going to do now is jump into Photoshop. And if you have Photoshop or any image editing software, then just jump, simply jump into it and then go to create a brand new file with that exact size. Now, don't worry if you don't have any image and editing software. You can use all the application icons that I create in this lecture in the downloadable resource for this course. So I'm going to go up to File, New. And then go to add it in a new kind of template now, which is 1024 by 1024 in pixels, and then press OK. This then goes on to create our blank square canvas that we're going to be working with to create our application icon. Now, when it comes to creating your application icon, you need to remember this the app icon is the first thing any initial user. Uh, sees of your application. So you need to make sure that it's eye-catching, it draws in the attention, but at the same time it accurately represents the application as an overall. So you need to make sure it stands out on the App Store, we also need to make sure that it stands out on our user's device because we want them to be able to download it and you want them to keep playing it. So we need to make sure that it's vibrant and they're able to spot it in the sea of all the applications there is being displayed. So in our kind of downloadable section we have a few images that we can currently use within our application that we have used. We got our logo, we got our background and then we got the actual hand icon which is linked in to our logo. I'm going to be taking the background and the hand icon and simply right clicking them and open them straight up into Photoshop so I can then go on to use them. So what I'm kind of thinking with creating our actual um, kind of icon itself is maybe doing like a kind of collage of all the handprints on the icon because at the end of the day, this application is tap based. You've got to tap it to play it and it's called Tappy Hands. So let's throw a bunch of hands in the icon. So I'm going to simply drag that over to our brand new template. And there we go. I'm going to kind of bring it down a bit. There we go. So I want to kind of place them all over our screen. So if I place one at the very start down here and then kind of uh, duplicate that layer by dragging the layer at the very bottom to then duplicate it, I then have a secondary one. So I'm going to rotate it. And there we go. Let's bring this off the screen a little bit there. And pretty much I'm going to keep doing this. So we've got a bunch of hands all collaged around the screen. So how cool is this then? We're not only designing an application, but we're doing a little bit of graphic work to then, uh, you know, for our application to make sure it looks really, really good on the simulator. So let's bring this all one, one all the way around here. Let's bring that in a bit to about there. So I also want to get in another one at the top. Let's bring this size down a bit there. So there we go. And then duplicate that layer. And then rotate it. So how does that look? That looks kind of cool. Now, the vision in my mind 
may not be coming across very well at the moment, but this is gonna be really, really cool. This is gonna stand out really, really well. So I've got the hand icon now in. Let's jump to the tab, it's got a background image and drag that over to, and then drop that in as well. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit on my navigator and make this completely full screen. There we go. I'm gonna drag this layer to the very bottom so it goes underneath all the hands, and there we go. So if I zoomed out, that's kind of how the application icon's gonna look. It looks a little bit weird, a little bit crazy, but bear with me on this one. So you can see it's got a few little sun ray spirals within it. I'm gonna completely change this up. So I'm gonna go into my color palette here, and I'm gonna select the color palette there to be the same as the bottom, which is uh, not roughly far off what we've got here. So the second color palette, go to the very top. So we've got two very different contrasting blues. I'm gonna get rid of the rays within it. Let's go to the effects icon at the bottom and then go to add in a gradient overlay. Now the gradient overlay I'm gonna select uh, from the gradient here is the two colors, blue colors that I've got already set up there. So let's see if I reverse them, how did that look? Maybe play around with the scale a little bit. There we go, we can kind of see it there. And press OK, and there we go. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's uh, bring these out a bit here, bring this one in a little bit more. There we go. So it's all mishmashy and it's all over the place, but that's something, that's the kind of design that's really gonna stand out on the App Store. So it's different, is vibrant, and that's the kind of thing you have to go for. Not only does it need to accurately represent the application, because you don't wanna mislead anyone downloading the app, but it's gotta be eye-catching. And this is eye-catching. You're looking at it going, whoa, why, why is there a bunch of hands all over this? And then that kind of intrigues you to find out more about the actual application itself. So now we've got all that set up then, we need to save this as a file. Now this is its largest state, this is the largest state that we're gonna be having for this app, um, this app icon at 1024 by 1024. So I'm gonna simply go up to file, and then save for web. And then once this view loads up now, you see it's at 1024, I can zoom out a little bit as well, there you go. 1024 by 1024. Now you can create your own application icon if you want, you completely change it up. Maybe just go for a sole hand in the middle of the app icon, it's entirely up to you. But I'm pretty much gonna save that, and we're gonna save it to our desktop, and I'll simply call it icon. And then once that's saved, we've got it now as an image file. Oh, if I bring that back up. An image file now saved on our desktop. How cool is that? So how do we get this now ready for application? Our application needs so many different sizes. Now before we go any further, we're gonna jump back into our project. And we're gonna head over to our assets.xc assets, our assets folder here. And within here, we have a little section at the very top called app icon, and we're gonna select that. I'm gonna quickly get rid of our debug area at the bottom there, removing that. So once we select on the app icon, this is where we add in all the app application icons we need within our app. On the right hand side here, you can then see the different attributes we can select. So for iPhone here, depending on what you're creating your application for, we can choose to have iOS one or later or seven or later. So by default, we leave it on seven or later. iPad, now we are creating this for iPad too. So we'll put this on seven or later as well. And by doing that, you can see it adds in a bunch more sections for our application icon. Now you may be wondering, what does all this mean? How do I know which sizes they need to be? Well, for example, if we choose our iPhone app icon here and select our first one, you can see that the size needs to be 60. And what does that mean? Well, we created our app store icon to be 1024 by 1024. This iPhone app icon here needs to be 60 by 60, but it has a scale of times two. So what you need to do, it's a little bit confusing to why Apple hasn't done this themselves, is you need to times um, our size by two. We also have a times three, so that times two doesn't become 60 by 60, it becomes 120 by 120. Same for our times three, it doesn't become 60 by 60, it becomes 180 by 180. So that's how you kind of work out the sizes. But you may be thinking now, there's quite a few here. There's two, four, six, eight, you know, there's 16, 17 
sections here, 17 individual icons that we need to create for different sizes. There's gotta be a really simple and easy way in how we can actually create 17 different sizes. And the answer is, yes there is. Now, we created the largest version that we're ever going to need, which is perfect for us. That really big version that we created is what gets displayed on the App Store. Now, if we head back over to the internet now, where is on our human interface, um, human interface guidelines here, you can see all the different sizes and stuff like that. You can see iPhone 180 by 180, which is the time, you know, the 60 by 60 times three that we just talked about. Uh, there is a brilliant website called App or makeappicon.com. Simply, if you head over to there, they have a brilliant tool which allows us to import an image and that will chop it up and create every single sized application icon we need for our project. So all we need to do is simply get the largest size app icon that we created and drop it into the little toaster that they have. It will pull it in. It will start baking it, and what that's going to do then is going to create a bunch of individual smaller files perfectly for what we need within our application. And it's a very easy and simple tool. So we just wait for this then to finish up, and then once it's done, if I then scroll down, it gives you a little preview of what it looks like on the iPhone um, or the uh, Apple Watch. It looks quite cool. So you can see all of the individual different sizes that we've got all set up now. So how do we get these? Well, what you need to do then is drop in your email address at the top there and then simply download it. You can, you know, uncheck to subscribe to their newsletter so, you know, you won't get spammed by anything. But just drop in your email address, press the download section, and they'll send you an email with a folder containing all the individual application icon sizes that you're going to be needing. So I'm just going to place in my email address now, get sent my folder, and then we'll see all the files that we have. So I've now placed in my email address, I've got my file sent over to me, and you can see when you open up your file, this is what's inside of it. You have Android, iMessenger, iOS, and WatchKit folders. They create an application icon for everything, which is pretty, pretty cool. But we want to focus on the iOS folder. And inside here, it gives us three versions of our iTunes um, application icon that we created. The iTunes artwork app 3X is the original one that we created. But we're going to jump into our app icon folder here. And then we're given, you can see here, a bunch of different sizes. So I'll make it a little bit bigger so we can actually now see it. And we're going to add all these now to each section within our app icon folder in our assets folder. So let's start then with our iPhone notification, which is 20 pixels. So the times two here, 20 times two is 40. So we need to find them, the 40 by 40, or the 20 by 20 times two, which are 20 here, times two, let's drag and drop that in. We need the times three, drag and drop that in as well. Then we have the 29 pixel one, times two and times three. So the 29 times two, drop that in, the times three goes into, We've got the 40 times 2 and times 3 as well. So the 40 times 2, 40 times 3, and so on and so on. You can see how simple that is, and it's created all the images for us. It, it, it's a brilliant icon. I do recommend using it if you do need to create application icons. So 60 times 2, 60 times 3, uh, the 76 times 2. Then we've got the 76 times 1, which is the original one, which is just 76 times 76. We got the uh, simple iPad Pro app here, 83.5, a very awkward size, but it's a times two one. There we go. We got the uh, iPad Spotlight, 40 times one and times two. So the times one, times two. iPad settings, 29 times one and times two. So 29 here, times one, times two. Now if I just move this over to this side, we got the iPad notifications, 20 times one and times two. So times one, and then finally times two. So let's get rid of that folder for now. And we've actually got imported now all the application icons into our project that it basically needs. How cool is that? So if I'm creating one image using one simple tool, we've now got 17 different image sizes within our application. As simple as that. So back on the simulator here, again, if I go to press Command, Shift, and H, which takes us to our home view, we have no application icon being displayed at the exact moment. 
But let's stop it from build and running and go to build and run once more. And once it's built and run, if I then return to the home view, we should then have our application icon being displayed on our device. So now it's built and run, we press Command, Shift, and H. And there we go. Tappy Hands now has its very own icon. How cool is that? I think it's brilliant. So you can see underneath our application, we also have Tappy Hands, the text being displayed. Now, this kind of roughly works itself off by default, the project name. So if you've got something weird or something not quite right being displayed underneath, you can actually change what's being displayed. So if you go into our info.plist, and right where we have our bundle name here, you see it's got product name, we can simply change this. So if I type in ABC, and then quickly go to build and run once more, you'll now see that the text underneath the application icon will now simply display ABC. So this is handy for if you haven't named your project the same name as the application, or if you just want to simply change what it gets displayed as, see it says ABC. So if I return that now, where well, ABC here, and simply say, Tappy hands, everything we build it on. Let's change it up for the iPhone simulator and then go to build and run and we'll see how it looks on the iPhone simulator. So once it's built and run on the iPhone simulator, I press command shift and H again. It takes us back to our home device and you see now tappy hands underneath and our pretty cool icon that we designed. It's a very unique icon with all these hands. It does actually make you want to click on it and find out what this application is all about. So back in the assets folder then, we've got all of our images now added into each individual section that we need it. Uh, and again, it covers everywhere from notifications for being displayed in the settings and the spotlight, everywhere where the application icon needs to be displayed on your user's device, it's got an icon for it. Now this handles everything within the device itself. When we come to submitting the application to the App Store, the largest icon that we created, our kind of default image, that's the image we use and we upload to the App Store so we can be displayed everywhere on the internet in high quality. But we'll come on to that in the next coming lectures anyway when we eventually submit our application to the App Store. Now, back in the simulator, if I simply press Command, uh, Shift and H twice, bring up our kind of a uh, um, multi kind of application um, center here. We can swipe it up to close the application. Now, when I go to build and run now or select on the application icon itself, we get that set white screen there. For a split second, we got a white screen. Now, that white screen there is known as a launch screen or a loading screen. Now, that gets displayed before your application loads up. It's kind of like if you've got a really big application, which has got loads of memory, um, it will display that loading screen or launch screen for a longer period of time. So if you've ever played any video game or anything like that, and it always has a loading screen. So we need to design something for it. In the next lecture, we're going to focus on creating our very own launch screen for our application. <laughs>